history of inaccurate uh, statements. There has been quite a bit of controversy over this newsletter that went out under your name. A number of uh, comments that were perceived as racist, as inaccurate. You said that even though they were written under your name, that you're not necessarily, that you didn't necessarily know they were written, you don't necessarily stand by them. Can you really take the time now and explain to everybody what happened there, you know, how it was possible that those kind of comments went out under your name without you knowing well, about it? it? It's been explained many times, and they were things written uh, 20 years ago, approximately, that I did not write. So concentrating on something that was written 20 years ago that I didn't write, you know, is diverting the attention from most of the important issues. But the inference is obvious that, uh, and you even bring up the word racial overtones. More importantly, you ought to ask me what my relationship is for racial relationships. And one of my heroes is Martin Luther King because he practiced the libertarian principle of peaceful resistance and peaceful uh, civil disobedience, as did Rosa Parks did. But also, I'm the only one up here and the only one in the Democratic Party that understands true racism in this country. It's in the judicial system, and it has to do with enforcing the drug laws. Look at the percentages. The percentage of people who use drugs are about the same with blacks and whites, and yet, the blacks are arrested way disproportionately. They're, they're prosecuted in prison way disproportionately. They get, they get the death penalty way disproportionately. How many times have you seen a white, rich person get the electric chair or get, uh, you know, execution? But poor minorities have an injustice, and they have an injustice in war as well because the minorities suffer more. Even with a draft, with a draft, they suffer definitely more, and without a draft, they're suffering disproportionately. If we truly want to be concerned about racism, you ought to look at a few of those issues and look at the drug laws, which are being so unfairly enforced. We want to thank you for the first round of this debate, and we want to take a break right now. And when we come back, there's so many family issues, issues of gay rights that have been front and center in this campaign. We'd love to have you address some of those again. Thank you for being with us. This is the 2012 debate at St. Anthony. You're watching live ABC News coverage of the New Hampshire Republican Party debate. You've got a new ad up in South Carolina taking direct aim at Senator Santorum. You call him a corrupt, a corporate lobbyist, a Washington insider with a record of betrayal. You also call him corrupt in that ad. Senator Santorum is standing right here. Uh, are you willing to stand by those charges and explain them? Well, it was a quote somebody did make a survey, and I think he came out as one of the top corrupt individuals because he took so much money from the lobbyists. But really what the whole... There it goes again. <laughs> they but, they but, caught you not telling the truth, Ron. But, but re really... <laughs> what really counts is, is his record. I mean, he's a big government, big spending individual. The group that called me corrupt was a group called Crew. Uh, if you haven't been sued by Crew, you're not a conservative. Uh, it's, it's a ridiculous charge, it's, and, and you should know better. Back live from Manchester, New Hampshire, in a moment. Live from St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire, once again, Diane Sawyer, George Stephanopoulos, and WMUR-TV's Josh McKelvin. Back in Manchester, Governor Romney, I want to go straight to you. Senator Santorum has been very clear in his belief that the Supreme Court was wrong when it decided that a right to privacy was embedded in the Constitution. And following from that, he believes that states have the right to ban contraception. Now, I should add that he said he's not recommending that no, states do that. Well, I'll, I'll be clear. Right? Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm giving you your due. We're talking about Tenth Amendment and the right of but states. But I do to want to get to that core okay. question. Governor Romney, do you believe that states have the right to ban contraception, or is that trumped by a constitutional right to privacy? Uh, George, this is an unusual uh, topic that you're raising. The states have a right to ban contraception. I can't imagine a state banning contraception. I, I can't imagine the circumstances where a state would want to do so. And if I were uh, uh, a governor well, of a state or a, le a, or, or a, le or a legislator of a state, state I would totally and completely oppose any effort to ban contraception. Uh, so you're asking, given the fact that there's no state that wants to do so, and I don't know of any candidate that wants to do so, you're asking, could it constitutionally be done? We can ask our constitutionalist here. Uh, <laughs> well, 
Sure. That's it. I'm sure Congressman Paul Okay, Wayne, come, on, I'm, come on, come on back. Asking Go you, do you believe that states have that right or not? George, I, I, I don't know whether the state has a right to ban contraception. No state wants to. I mean, the idea of, of you putting forward things that states might want to do that no one state no state wants well, to do wait. and asking me whether they could do it or not is kind of a silly thing, I think. Governor, my, you my, are... my, my... <laughs> Hold on a second. Governor, you went to Harvard Law School. This, you know very well this, this, this has is based a Supreme on... Court, has the Supreme Court decided that the states do not have the right to provide a contraception? Yes, I, they have. Oh, if, I, look, in 1965, I Griswold the, v. Connecticut. I believe in the, that the law of the land is as spoken by the Supreme Court and that if we disagree with the Supreme Court, and occasionally I do, then we have a process under the Constitution to change that decision, and it's, it's known as the amendment process. And, and where we have, for instance, right now, we're, we're having issues that relate to same-sex marriage. My view is we should have a federal amendment of the Constitution defining marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, but I know of, of no reason to talk about but, contraceptions. But contraception you accept the Supreme regard. Court decision finding a right to privacy in the Constitution? I, I don't believe they decided that uh, that correctly. In my view, Roe v. Wade was improperly decided. It was based upon that same principle. And the, in, in my view, if we had justices like Roberts, Alito, Thomas, and Scalia, and more justices like that, they might well decide to return this issue to states as opposed to saying it's in the federal Constitution. And by the way, if the people say it should be in the federal Constitution, that instead of having unelected judges stuff it in there when it's not there, we should allow the people to express their own views through amendment and add it to the Constitution. But this idea that justice so should that be done in this case? Pardon? Should that be done in this should case? Should this be done in this case to allow states to ban contraception? No, so over... states don't want to ban contraception. So why would we why would we try and put it in the Constitution? I, my, with regards to gay marriage, I told you that's what I would amend, amend the Constitution. Contraception. It's working just fine. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Governor? George. I, I understand that, but you're still, you're, you're, you've given two answers to the question. Do you believe that the Supreme Court should overturn it or not? Do, do I believe the Supreme Court should overturn, do I, do I believe the Supreme Court should overturn Roe v. Wade? Yes, I do. He mentioned my name. Go ahead, Governor. <laughs> but was, I didn't know whether, I didn't know whether I got time when it was favorable or not, okay. but thank you. No, I think the Fourth Amendment is very clear. It, it, it's explicit in our privacy. You can't go into anybody's house and look at what they have or their papers or any private things without a search warrant. This is why the Patriot Act is worn, uh, wrong, because you have a right of privacy by the Fourth Amendment. As far as selling contraceptives, the Interstate Commerce Clause protects this because the Interstate Commerce Clause was originally written not to impede trade between the states, but it was written to facilitate trade between the states. So if it's not illegal to import birth control pills from one state to the next, it would be legal to sell birth control pills in that state. Senator Santorum? What's the question? The question... <laughs> <laughs> They're on the right to privacy and, and the response to Governor to Congressman Paul. Well, Congressman Paul is talking about privacy rights under the, under the Fourth Amendment, which I, I agree with him in. I don't necessarily agree that the Patriot Act violates that, but I do agree with, obviously, we have a, a right to privacy under the Fourth Amendment, but that's not what the Griswold decision nor the uh, Roe v. Wade decision were about. They created through a penumbra of rights uh, a, a new right to privacy that was not in the Constitution. And what I've, and that's, again, as I sort of agree with Governor Romney's uh, assessment, legal assessment, it, it created a right through bootstrapping, through creating th something that wasn't there. I, I believe it should be overturned. I am for overturning Roe v. Wade. I do not believe that, uh, that we have a right in this country, in the Constitution, to take a human life. I don't think, that's, I don't think our founders envisioned that. I don't think the, the, the writing of the Constitution in anywhere enables that. I want to turn now, if I can, from the constitutional and the elevated here to something closer to, to home and to maybe families sitting in their living rooms all across this country. Yahoo sends us questions, as you know. We have them from real viewers. And I'd like to post one because it is about gay marriage. But at the level, and I would, I would really love to be able to ask you what you would say personally sitting in your living rooms to the people who ask questions like this. This is from Phil in Virginia. Given that you oppose gay marriage, what do you want gay people to do who want to form loving, committed, long-term relationships? What is your solution? And Speaker Gingrich? Well, I think what I would say is that we want to make it possible to have 
those things that are most intimately human between friends occur, for example, you're in a hospital. If there are visitation hours, should you be allowed to stay there? There ought to be ways to designate that. Uh, you want to have somebody in your will. There ought to be ways to designate that. But it is a huge jump from being understanding and considerate and concerned, which we should be, to saying we're therefore going to institute the sacrament of marriage as though it has no basis. The sacrament of marriage was based on a man and woman, has been for 3,000 years, is at the core of our civilization, and is something worth protecting and upholding. And I think protecting and upholding that doesn't mean that you have to go out and make life miserable for others, but it does mean you make a distinction between a historic sacrament of enormous importance in our civilization and simply deciding it applies everywhere and it's just a civil, it's just, it's just a civil right. Uh, it's not. It is a part of how we define ourselves, and I think that a, a marriage between a man and a woman is part of that definition. Governor Huntsman, you've talked about civil unions. How do you disagree with the others on the stage? Well, uh, personally, I think civil unions uh, are fair. I support them. I think there's such a thing as equality under the law. Uh, I'm a married man. I've been married for 28 years. I have uh, seven kids. Glad we're off the contraception discussion. <laughs> 15 minutes worth, by the way. Uh, and I don't feel that my relationship is at all threatened by civil unions. It, on, on marriage, I'm a traditionalist. I think that ought to be saved uh, for one man and one woman. But I believe that civil unions uh, are fair. And uh, I think it uh, brings uh, a level of dignity to, to relationships. And I believe in reciprocal beneficiary rights. I think they should be part of civil unions, unions as well. And states ought to be able to talk about this. Uh, I think it's very, very, I think it's absolutely appropriate. I'd like to go to Senator Santorum with a similar topic. We're in a state where it is legal uh, for same-sex couples to marry. 1,800, in fact, uh, couples have married since it became law here in New Hampshire. The legislature passed it a couple of years ago. And they're trying to start families, some of them. Your position on same-sex adoption, obviously you uh, are in favor of traditional families. But are you going to tell someone that they belong in a, as a ward of the state or in foster care rather than have two parents who want them? Well, this isn't a federal issue. It's a state issue, number one. Uh, the states can make that determination in New Hampshire. My, my feeling is that this is an issue that should be done. I, I believe the issue of marriage itself is a federal issue, that we can't have different laws with respect to marriage. We have to have one law. Uh, marriage is, as Newt said, a foundational institution of our country, and we have to have a singular law with respect to that. We can't have somebody married in one state and not married in another. Once we, If we were uh, successful in establishing that, uh, then this issue becomes moot. If we don't have a, a, a federal law, I'm certainly not going to have a federal law that bans adoption for gay couples when there are only gay couples in certain states. So I mean, this is a state issue, not a federal issue. Well, let me ask you to follow up on that, if you don't mind, Senator. Uh, with those 1,800, if, you, if we have those, a federal uh, constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage, what happens to the 800, uh, 1,800 families who have married here? Are their marriages basically illegitimate at this point? If we have a constitution, if the constitution says marriage is between a man and a woman, then marriage is between a man and a woman. And, and therefore, that's what marriage is and, and, and would be in this country. And those who are not men and women who are married are, would not be married. That's uh, what I, the constitution would say. If I could come back to the living room question again, Governor Romney, would you weigh in on the Yahoo question about what you would say sitting down in your living room to a gay couple who say, we simply want to have the right to, as the, as the person who wrote the email said, we want gay people to form loving, committed, long-term relations. It's in human terms, what would you say to them? Well, the answer is that that's a, a wonderful thing to do uh, and that there's every right for people in this country to form long-term, committed relationships with one another. That doesn't mean that they have to call it marriage or, or they have to receive the, the approval of the state and a marriage license and so forth for that to occur. Uh, there can be domestic partnership uh, benefits or, or a contractual relationship between two people, uh, which would include, as, as Speaker Gingrich indicated, hospital visitation rights and the like. We can decide what kinds of benefits we might associate with people who form this, those kind of relationships state by state. But, but to say that, that marriage is something other than the, than the relationship between a man, a, a man and a woman, I think, is a mistake. And, and the reason for that is not that we want to discriminate against people or to suggest that, that, uh, that gay couples uh, are not just as loving and can't also raise children well, but, but it's instead a recognition that for society as a whole, the, the nation presumably will, will